Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to talk today, and I want us to talk today about a couple of uh, things that have um, uh, have bothered me, like for my whole career with my company, with my whole life, and I'm sure everyone. I wanted us to talk about uh, fear, and I want us to talk about uncertainty in life, uncertainty in our lives, in our families, in our uh, companies, in our roles, in our companies. Um, I want to talk about how little data we have in life and how can we make actual decisions that make sense and that we can feel confident about, which is extremely hard. So I remember, I remember since, uh, like it was yesterday, my first meeting with, um, with uh, our first investor. So it was in Silicon Valley in the west coast of the United States and we went to a cafe in the middle of Palo Alto. And we sat there, there were a bunch of uh, young entrepreneurs around us, and I had everything rehearsed, like the whole flow of the discussion was in my mind. It was, uh, you know, fully prepared. So the guy sits next to me and asks me directly, look, looks, looks me deep in my eyes and asks me directly, do you see yourself uh, leading your company in four years with 400 people? So I had, of course, I, know, I knew the answer, right? I knew what I should say, and I knew what he wanted to hear. It's probably something like, if we do everything we want to do, it's probably be going to be 1,000 em employees. So my actual response was something like this. Suddenly, I realized, I, I pictured in my mind how it is to have a company with 400 employees. Back then, we were just seven. So my actual response was, Holy crap. <laughs> so it was just really natural, right? It just, I just saw it in front of me. So the guy actually asked me, you have no idea what you're signing up for, right? So I just shook my head. I said, no. And he said, good. You need to be honest to have this discussion. And you need to be honest with yourself so that you are authentic, which is the only way that you can actually really talk to people. So if you can, if you'll try and bullshit them and just say that everything is possible and all these things, you know, they might get excited for a while, but you're not truly connecting with them. So taking good decisions and actually being resourceful and looking for the answers requires you to identify that you don't have the answers and you need to reach to, to research and find them, right? Like in a the movie, they said that you cannot fill a cup that is already full. So this, this whole idea of knowing what to do and actually doing things and being inspired and confident, but at the same time knowing that your, your choices might not reach and lead you to the conclusions and the, and the goals that you have, really bothered me for my whole life. So that's what I want to share. So for those who know me, I love rock climbing. Uh, at some point, I took six months off my PhD to just rock climb for six months, five times a day around uh, Patras. And um, the nice thing about uh, climbing is that it has these both modes uh, of what, we, what I mentioned. So when you're climbing something that is within your comfort zone, you feel confident, right? I mean, you're, you're doing everything you need to be doing and you feel like, you know, those new guys down there that look right up, they just see, wow, what a badass. Like, similar to Tom Cruise, right? Look at him. There's no rope. There's a void behind him, right? And he's just looking like a badass. The problem is that, okay, that might be the case when we're doing like our everyday things. We wake up in the morning, we go to work, we know I want to do this, this, and this. On a Sunday, you, you, you're saying I have a checklist of things that I want to do. So being in that mode of total control in the moment is something that is really, really important in life. However, in reality, sometimes you take a step back and you realize that it's a bit different, really. So if you zoom out a bit, this is how an actual rock climb that when you, when you climb something that is outside of your comfort zone look, looks like. You realize that it's actually windy and you're shaking a bit. You realize that your hands are sweaty, that your forearms are pumped, and your last piece of protection is really, really shady. If you, n n not even a fly can fall on it, it will just pop. The previous one already popped, 
And you're wondering what will happen if I actually, if I fell, right? You think about your family, you think about your career, you start thinking about all these big things that, you know, I mean, you might lose them if you hurt yourself. And the worst thing is that the worst part of the route is actually probably ahead of you, right? So then you zoom out a bit more and you realize, really, what the hell am I doing up here? <laughs> Why am I not at home, like, watching, um, watching TV, watching Netflix, and eating popcorn and having, like, a nice lajano uh, dolmades for dinner, and I'm up here like this, right? So it's this huge shift in understanding of what are we doing and what are the risks, right? Here, the risks suddenly become really, really obvious. So this happens every day in our lives, believe it or not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody, like, uh, everybody felt like that. You're not really uh, sure. So I tried to explain this uh, when I started my PhD in the United Kingdom. So I wanted to use computers and try to figure out whether having uncertainty and having, like, not being able to be certain about what you're doing can actually be achieved. So I tried to make computers think in fuzzy ways and try to apply fuzzy logic so that they can answer complex questions that had no certain results. Computers are great in taking really rational, logical decisions, right? It's either yes or no in most cases. Here's an example. You can ask your iPhone, your, your cell phone, give me a, a pizza place within five miles. That's pretty easy, right? Either a shop makes pizzas or not, and either it's either within five miles or not. Well, you don't really make decisions like that. It's most, more likely to ask something like, you're asking yourself something like, I'd like a light dinner that is within walking distance, you know, that I can easily get to. Now, what is a light dinner? It depends what you ate in the, uh, for lunch. It depends what time of the evening it is. It's a different, like if it's 7, 7 p.m. or like 10 p.m., what's light? Um, and what is walking distance? Well, it depends, again, what time it is, you know, how tired you are, what's your age, what's your fitness level and everything, right? So, and unfortunately, programming languages are not designed at all to do something like that. And actually, it's more like if this, then else, then that, else, that. So, in short, I failed. Really, uh, applying this kind of fuzzy logic makes computation extremely uh, costly, and there's no way to actually scale, prog scale the, prog the problems linearly, but the actual cost for the calculation grows exponentially, right? So it cannot, you cannot just grow, uh, this just doesn't scale like for computers. So, I really failed, and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that I could, uh, I could, like, even during that period, I didn't realize anything. So, um, at some other point in my life, I, <laughs> I actually talked about this with my therapist. So, it was very interesting discussions, right? And it was more like, okay, how can we be sure that what I'm doing today and tomorrow actually leads to something that I can count on? Um, all these choices that we make every day, all the choices I make at my company, right? How you deal with someone uh, in a meeting that kind of told you something that, may, that hurt you, right? How do you come across to your people and to your co co-workers? How do you deal with, you know, a tough kid and all these things? So how can you be sure that what you do today can lead somewhere uh, that is good for you? How do you know that what you do today can lead to happiness? And there is no real answer, right? You don't. You don't know. Unfortunately, you don't know. So when you're working outside of your comfort zone and when you're growing and when you're trying new things for the first time, it's scary and you really don't know. Uh, you, maybe someone tried like, to, to get pregnant for a while and then you're trying and trying and trying. At some point, the doctor tells you, it ha it's happening. It's, look, it's happening. And then at some point, either in the same day or the next days, very often we realize and we think, holy crap, a baby? I mean, how? How can I do it? it? I don't know. I have no idea how can I do it, right? So when you're growing, this happens very frequently. Um, 
Some of you are teenagers. Um, some of you have teenage kids. Some of, all of us actually were teenagers at some point. So you remember, we remember how it was. It was really scary because you started growing outside of what is standard for you. And the people that took care of everything, every complex question, start fading away and you start to take responsibility for the outcomes of your actions. So it's a really scary time exactly because of that uncertainty. So, um, so at some point, uh, I'll, I'll share a story that kind of resonated the same thing. I was at a conference that I had to, I had to give a presentation for around 6,000 people. I was, I think, 25 at the time. And I was backstage really, really, really nervous. Right? I've never done that before. I just like, gave a couple of small presentations to friends and some uh, groups that I knew everyone there. So, you know, all these thoughts about I'm going to be judged and how, am, am I prepared well enough, right, came to my mind. So I was nervous pacing up and down uh, in, in the in backstage. I almost like uh, had a dent, uh, had a trench <laughs> in the floor because of my pacing. So one of the organizers, I'll, I'll never forget this. One of the organizers came and asked me, are you nervous uh, about your presentation? I mean, you think? <laughs> what gave you that impression? Um, of course I am. So she told me, uh, you know what? You're going to do it anyway. You're going to get up there, go up there and give the presentation. You might as well have fun while doing it. Just go out there and play. So it was a shocking kind of like shift in my mind when, when she said that to me because I thought, hey, in reality, there's no way that I'm somewhere else. There's no way that I could be safer now. I'm here. I'm going to do it anyway. So taking the what if out of the equation makes you focus on, okay, I just need to do this, right? So it's kind of important to be thinking about this, uh, this notion of, okay, it's uncertain, I don't know, I feel uncomfortable, I'm scared shitless, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I think that's, that's the mentality that we need to be having in order to live healthy lives with all these risks and uncertainty about the costs of our choices. It's super important that the trick is to really go out there and be playful and try things out and just have a, have a mentality of, I want to play. I want to go out there and I'm going to do it anyway. So I should just go out there and play. So something that parallelizes with climbing as well, you could have taken the, the, the easy path to go at the top of the mountain, right? The top of the mountain is not the destination. Like Ithaca, right? Uh, like uh, Kavafi said, you should wish that the road will be, it will be a, like a, a long one. It's about the journey, right? So why did you choose this route? Why did you choose to go on that like, steep slab with no holds? You could have gone the other way around, right? So sometimes we choose because of the adventure. We start companies to feel the exhilaration of having your own company, controlling your own destiny, and actually feel the adrenaline. We have kids because we want to have kids and we want to try this out and actually have fun. We know it's going to be hard. Everybody tells us it's going to be super hard, yet we still do it. So uh, the way that I cope with this and this notion of uncertainty and the fear that we have every day is to actually think that, hey, it's a game, we should play, we should take wise decisions, but in the end, we cannot fully fully control the outcome. And that's okay. We're playing with the chips we've been dealt with. So the only problem now is that I need to remember this. When we have our all hands meeting on Tuesday and there are 40 people waiting for me to inspire them and to inspire myself and make them feel that everything is planned, everything is going you know, with a plan and the future is certain as we are applying what we're doing. I just need to remember this. Thank you.